Set amid the pyramids, oasis, and cultural upheaval of ancient Egypt, Assassin's Creed Origins is the first entry into the franchise to take place earlier than its predecessors, at a time when what we now know as the Assassin Brotherhood was in its infancy. Combat, exploration, and even the way missions are structured have all been overhauled and reinvented, creating an experience that, while unmistakably Assassin's Creed, represents a whole new beginning for the series. Assassin's Creed Origins is a world not of elaborate gadgets and strange technologies, but of gods, mystery, and freedom. We've dipped our toes into that world by freely exploring one of its regions, Fayum, and speaking to the Origins creators. Here's what we've learned about what is in store when Assassin's Creed Origins is released at the launch of Xbox One X and on October 27th for Xbox One, PS4, PS4 Pro, and PC. Welcome to Ancient Egypt. Now, Asraf Ismail, game director for Assassin's Creed Origins, knows a thing or two about creating massive worlds, having previously led development of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and its vast Caribbean seascape. He and his team have taken what they've learned and used it to build a huge recreation of ancient Egypt, filled with diverse landscapes and endless activities to pursue. We have the capacity, from a technological standpoint, to create a massive countryside, says Ismail. It's not a city. It's a whole country with many cities, many villages, many exotic landscapes. We now know that people, when they think Egypt, they think desert, says Jungasson, the game's creative director. But Egypt is way more than that. You have the Nile Delta, you have the Nile River, you have tons of oases. So when you mix all of that from the green, lush fauna of the Nile Delta to the oasis of Fayum, it's the perfect playground. The Fayum region is just a small part of the game's world, and the E3 demo is set in an even smaller part of Fayum, but even the small slice we had access to was vast and diverse, a place where desert cliffs give way to bustling towns and sprawling acres of carefully irrigated farmland. It's home to opulent temples and mysterious Egyptian ruins, all huddled around the massive, crocodile-infested Lake Maris. It's a place where you can lose yourself for hours uncovering secrets, crossing swords with mercenaries and fending off a broad assortment of deadly wildlife. A first glimpse of Fayum introduced us to Bayek of Siwa, the last of the fading Egyptian military order. We begin the E3 demo, which opens at a point just shy of halfway through the game, with Bayek on horseback, riding along a desert pathway surrounded by cliffs and dune-covered hills that were free to scramble up for an expanded view of our surroundings. Following the path ahead leads us to a sweeping view of Lake Maris and its surrounding towns. Two pharaonic statues stand sentry over the entrance to the valley. As we soon learn, there are already relics of an ancient culture that is starting to fade under the Pollux, a Greek dynasty that has overseen centuries of occupation and rule. Fayum's landscape feels lived in. To the south of the Maris in the Hurum, where a subtle villa is surrounded by weathered, poor-looking dwellings that get poorer the closer we get to the docks. Following the roads out of town, centre leads us past the market stalls and into the farmlands of the USA, where acres of farms and highly flammable straw huts make for a strong contrast against cloth-draped Greek pavilions and a huge stone temple dedicated to the cro cro crocodile gog, Sir Beck. The NPCs of the world have full schedules, day and night, says Ismail. The NPCs are living a life in this world which includes working, sleeping, socialising, eating, peeing and so on. Farmers farm, priests run rituals and prayers, bandits ambush and steal, polemic guards patrol, defend, transport and so on. All of this is based on their day and night cycle, and as you learn more about the world and the specific characters you meet, you can play with where, uh, you can play with where to meet them, assassinate, attack, steal, infiltrate and so on. Head up beyond the NSA and you'll come across to the desert, where goats roam among hyenas cobras and camel riding bandits. There are pockets of civilians amid the dunes as well as harder to find points of interest that hold a unique allure to Bayik. It's worth no noting that viewpoints are still dotted across the map, waiting for you to climb and sync with them, although their functionality is a little different from previous games. In the demo, they aren't necessarily for revealing the map, but synchronising unlocks them as a fast travel spot, while also marking potential quests and other points of interest as question marks. If fast travel is too fast for your liking, Bayek can quickly get around using horse, camels and even chariots, which can be purchased from stables and summoned up at upon any whistle. Better still, these don't need your constant input to get around. 
If you'd like to mount to move on autopilot, you can command it to follow the road and then nudge it in you and then nudge it when you reach a fork. Stables are just one of four types of shops too. You'll be able to visit blacksmiths for continually updated sections of weapon and shields, weavers for new outfits, and bazaars for rare loot and mystery crates, which you can earn through daily quests. The real jewel of Fayum is Lake Moles itself. Its shores are dotted with loose, tiny fishing vessels that can blaze across the lake at high speeds without consideration for wind. Fishermen will sometimes steer their feluce out, out to you while you're stuck swimming in the middle of a lake and then they'll sit quietly at the bell while you command their boats. The larger vessels that patrol the lake tend to be much less friendly. Crude with mercenaries who will blithely ram your boat to pieces even before they spot you and open fire. So it's nice to pay attention to them by sneaking aboard, dropping the lot of them with Baik's hidden blade and stealing any loot that isn't nailed down. To find what makes Mori more special however, you'll need to dive under its relatively calm surface. For the first time, Assassin's Creed Origins seamlessly integrates underwater exploration with the rest of its world, letting you freely direct and underwater ruins in search of loot. Some of the highlights of Moris include the sunken temples of Nephros, marked by a Sobek statue jutting out of the water and a shipwreck containing golden treasure keys to one of the demo's missions. Both are a great opportunity to use Bayek's Animus Pulse ability, a wave that highlights loot items and other points of interest with briefly flickering sparks. Whether you're diving for treasure or just going for a swim, wildlife is a constant concern. Moris is home to teeming populations of hippos and crocodiles, both of which will aggressively attack fishing boats, each other and you. Fortunately, Bayek is much more than a match for them thanks in part for the combat system that is more flexible than ever before. So guys and girls, that has been my breakdown of Assassin's Creed Origin, the setting. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, make that like button down below, comment what you're excited to see in Assassin's Creed Origins, and subscribe for the latest and greatest Assassin's Creed Origins gameplay and informational videos. Bye for now guys, and have a great day.